If your favourite wrestler pulled out this July, I imagine you're concerned for their ranking's fate. The men themselves certainly are. So, let me try to put your minds at ease with the info I've gleaned so far. How then will they make this chart with this unusual set of wrestler results? Let's start with what we know about COVID withdrawals. Takayasu and friends, who pulled out pre-tournament, will be treated in line with existing COVID absence policy. Either rank retained or single rung demotion. Wrestlers with winning scores who completed July will be promoted as normal. Thus, 7-0 will take Asanoyama from Upper Division 4 to Upper Division 3. Wrestlers with losing scores who completed July will be demoted as normal. Hence, Asanoyama's hapless colleague Fukai, who got 1 and 6 on his wounded ankle, is set to fall heavily. Wrestlers whose winning score was confirmed before their COVID pullout, a la Kota de Bakari, will be promoted. Wrestlers whose losing score was settled pre pullout, like Endo, will be demoted. However, in neither case do we know by how much. It depends on whether COVID absences are treated as losses, discounted altogether, or weighted in some way. Now, as is often the case in Japan, each policy in isolation seems to work. But when they're all put together, something looks wrong. And under this system, the problem is that whether infected or not, the less a COVID-impacted wrestler fights, the more likely he is to hold rank. Fighters such as Or Shoma, whose winning or losing score was not determined pre pullout, will, we think, be treated almost as if entirely absent, rank retained or one rung down. Or Shoma has five wins, Kaisei has five wins, but Kaisei is penalized for fighting more. And while it's likely Shoma would have gone on to claim a winning score, you can't simply extrapolate, as Shodai's form proved. And what of Tsurugi Sho, who also has five wins, but whose losing score was decided by his day 13 default? He looked on course for demotion. If we extrapolate, he's demoted. But for all we know, he could have won those final three. Furthermore, Takayasu, who didn't fight at all, is guaranteed the best deal. And Takanosho, who fought and then withdrew due to non-Covid reasons, is also set to be harshly punished. We then have the Mitakeumi controversy. As you know, Sumo Chiefs quickly briefed the press that despite his 2 and 4 pre-default and 2 and 5 post-default, he would keep Ozeki. But even Sankei Sports newspaper, loath to criticize Sumo Chiefs, said that by that logic, no one withdrawing midway due to COVID can have their rank changed. How can, for example, a 4-2 winning score earn promotion if a 2-4 losing score doesn't warrant demotion? And just imagine if Shodai had finished with 8 or 9 defeats, which looked likely at the time of Mitake's exit. How could they have justified dropping him and protecting Mitake? Sanke Sports has since walked back its gripes and deemed the Mitake decision broadly consistent with Sumo Covid convention. I, however, am not so sure of that. But I think you get the broader point here. That in Japan, Large traditional organizations see senior members decide whatever they can get away with. Seniority trumps consistency. Sumo is clearly no different. Junior coaches will defend their men and squabble for advantage until seniors shout them down. 
I've even had two active wrestlers say, when it comes to ranks, what this man says goes. And the chart tends to bear that out. In short then, the more incomplete your favourite wrestler's score, the safer he is. With under 8 losses at salaried level, or under 4 below that, he's pretty okay.